So here we are, New York Comic Con 2016, Thursday, day number one. And here I am with animator, director, comic book artist, and a plethora of other things, LaShawn yeah. Thomas. Now, we were just at the Crunchyroll panel. We had just gotten out. Now, of course, you know... Uh, LaShawn is holding court out here, and, and you know we took a took a minute while all the fans kind of dispersed, but we got the interview going. Um, how was it being an inspiration? I noticed a lot of people who came up to you and approached you tended to be uh, aspiring artists of color, and how you're sort of like a guiding light in that in that field, you know, because obviously there is there is a contingency of people of color who are into anime, and then a guy of your position, you sort of, uh, you know. People are aspiring to what to what you've achieved, and where and where you're headed. Um, you know, for well, first of all, it's it's, uh, it's incredibly humbling to be even associated with inspiration. Um, I don't really look at it that way. Most of the time, when I'm not talking to people telling me I'm inspirational, I'm terrified <laughs> most of the time, trying to do good work and making sure that what I'm doing is good. And so it's it's humbling to hear that. I'll never get used to it. Um, you know, you see yourself every day in the mirror, you know, unless you're telling yourself you're an inspiration every morning, you don't get used to hearing that. So um, it's definitely humbling to hear that. Um, as far as being a sort of beacon or a guiding light, I don't see it as that way either. I think um, I'm just using the window I have to, you know, show my enthusiasm and love for, for the medium that I work in. Um, and I just happen to be a brother. So, you know, um, the system around us puts light on that. You know what I mean? Um, and I, I can't control that. So... But that's never my agenda. You know what I mean? Gotcha. I want to be able to produce original content and, you know, make sure it's cool and sort of put out the type of stuff that I would like to see more of myself. So, gotcha. so now, um, Cannon Busters, I know we were kind of, you know, fans of fans from our website and fans of the of the Tsunami Faithful podcast. Uh, the, you know, Cannon Busters on a lot of people's mouths and their lips a couple months back. Uh, what's the progress with that? Um, we just released a pilot to the backers only in July. Mm -hmm. um, very well received. We're currently working on the backer rewards now. Um, and Cannon Bus is, is, is uh, in a state of uh, enthusiastic flux, if you will, if there is a <laughs> such thing. Um, I can't speak to more on it, but um, we are, we're very enthusiastic about the next few months coming up. So um, in terms of it being publicly released, um, that's still in the discussions of how we want to release it. There's, just, there's certain factors that are in play that will determine how we release it publicly, and that's all I can really say, but it's coming. Okay, so that's, that's the present. Uh, before we get to the future, I, people, they would chop my head off if I didn't ask about the past. Anything going on with Boondocks or Black Dynamite? Uh, you know, you got a lot of hungry fans out there that, that just want, they want more and more. Um, Black Dynamite, uh, that was an Adult Swim Ars Nova. Uh, project. Ars Nova is the company that owns Black Dynamite, the IP, um, with Cartoon Network as far as the animated series is concerned, and that's really up to them. So I'm not... Black Dynamite was something, I think we premiered the season finale last January, mm -hmm. and um, I've since moved on since then to work on other projects. So I'm not really connected to the Black Dynamite machine as it is today, you know what I mean? Um, I... Who knows where it's going at this point? I mean, that's up to Cartoon Network and whether they choose to move forward with it or not. But as of now, I have no idea what's going on with that in, in terms of their interest in continuing it beyond season two. Um, same thing with Boondocks. Boondocks is something that's synonymous with my name um, when it comes to people who follow my work. Um, again, I think season four came out last year, too, or something like that. I haven't even watched season four yet. So <laughs> I, I have, I've just been out of the country, very busy. Um, focusing on you know my path and stuff that I've been doing, so I have no idea what the plans are for Boondocks. I hope so. I'm a fan, so <laughs> you know I, I hope they continue it. We'll see what happens. Now, part of the part of the uh, Crunchyroll announcement was an announcement of you being involved with a whole new show coming up in the future. Of course, now I, I'm not going to ask you when it comes out because I already heard you ask, ask that question answer that question from one of the fans after the panel. Um, but can you tell us a little bit about Children of Ether? A new animated project that I'm creator, director of, um, in conjunction with Crunchyroll. Um, they were blessed enough uh, uh, to be in a position to be able to invest uh, attention to financing original content. I think that's always been a plan for them as a fan, as a subscriber. I've always thought that was a the direction they would go. Um, it's just incredibly humbling that they would look my direction and sort of kick this off. So um, it's a project that's been, you know, one of the many projects that I've had, you know, bubbling in my head. 
Um, and uh, just fortunate to be in a position for Crunchyroll to reach out to me to develop it and produce it as a project for them. So, so uh, I'd like to thank you and for the people out there in, for Geeky Inc. and the Tommy Faithful Podcast. Uh, thank you for coming on our show, Sean. Thanks for having me. Oh, appreciate it. Thank you. Thanks a lot.